Hey there guys, Adam from the base set. Uh, this is going to be my, mas my, the nationals, my nationals 2013 video. Uh, just want to apologize for the air conditioning. I'm really, really hot because I don't feel good. I'm sick, got a fever. So that's going to keep me cool. Uh, let's see. So, nationals. We got there Thursday. I bought a lot of stuff. Uh, did some trading. Nothing major really happened. Not that I can remember right now. And then Friday. So I get there Friday, sit down. Oh, that's the shirt. I got that Thursday. I'll get an overview of that so you can see it better. But that's the third the national shirt back there. So Friday, get there at like nine ish. We're in our seats and we I don't remember what time we started. And I sit down against Robert Roche. And he's playing Weavile Execute. I don't remember who goes first, but it doesn't really matter in this matchup. Uh, and throughout the matchup, in the middle of the matchup, he throws down Frozen City. So, I know most of you are thinking, we've all executed, it's a joke deck, you, you know, how can you not lose to it? But I actually almost lost. So he throws down Frozen City, and to power up my Keldeos, because they weren't powered up at this point, I had to deluge 4 energy, uh, 3 or 4, so that's 20 for each one. So it's between 60 and 80 damage to knock out something, if I needed to. So, what he could do is propagate, get all the eggs back in his hand, discard all four for Weavile, and hit me for like 100, 120 or so, knock out. And like, just like that, just by trying to attack him, he knocks me out. So, I had some trouble with that, honestly. It was also, I was so tired. I didn't. I got like five hours of sleep, and just being so nervous because this is my first nationals, and I really wanted to do good. Uh, in the end, I beat him. I did have to call a judge because I was just so confused about propagation, and honestly, I still am confused. But I just kind of powered through it and did got rid of it. But I did win, so that was cool. Um, we had a couple minute break. I met up with my friend, um, and we talked, and then round two. And now I'm playing Carlos Rivias. Um, he was playing Plasma. Pretty standard matchup there. I don't really have much to say about most of these because they're not that like intense or anything special. But uh, the problem I had with this guy is his sleeves were reflective. Reflective. Because as he was going through his discard, the way he was holding his cards is I saw the an Ultra Ball reflecting off of something. And it took me a couple of seconds to realize why that was happening. I called the judge, and he told me at such a major tournament like this, reflective sleeves are okay. I don't remember the reasoning, and I don't know why I didn't contest it. I should have gone to the head judge. But I can tell by the guy, he looked like he was a polka dad. He knew what he was doing, but he wasn't that sure. He wasn't that, like, um, that good of a player. Because he made misplays, and if he knew what he was doing, he would have won the game. He, I only, I pretty much only won because he misplayed on a couple things, and pretty much secured me the game. But um, he, he was a really nice guy. Like I said, reflective sleeves, and he looked at me like I just called him, you know, an offensive name. And he had no idea, and I, you know, like I'm really sorry. I just had to call a judge. I want to make sure, you know, because you can't always just trust people at their word. You have to, you know, make sure. So. The judge just kind of dismissed it, I dismissed it, went along. Won that game, told him, okay, look, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to do that, I just wanted to make sure everyone was okay. And plus, him, if he doesn't, if he honestly doesn't know, he needs to go and buy new sleeves before he gets to his next round, and he does get disqualified from the tournament over something like silly like that. So, I beat him. Third round, I play Derek O'Neill. Now, I believe at this point, yeah, wait, is it Derek? Yeah, I play Derek, and he's is my Blastoids matchup, I believe. I believe he's playing Blastoids. No, wrong. Derek O'Neill is playing Plasma, so I play another Plasma. Um, I just saw him sitting next to me at a previous game. They were my first round game, and I saw him playing. He looked like good plays, confident. So I went into that game a little uneasy. Because I thought he was a good player, and me being not a good player, you know, when you sit down across from certain people, sometimes it makes you uneasy, but I try not to think of it that way, it's just everyone's a player, everyone's the same. 
So, I play him. He's He has a top cut mat that you win from the top cut side events. Um, I'm not going to really go into that, but he, um, he earned that mat. So, I was already... Oh, so it looks like he might, he might be a good player. Um, I get talking with him. He's, he's a really cool guy. I believe he's a judge. He was just insanely relaxed and cool. I beat him and go on. Like I said, it's plasma, not too much going on. Nothing too special about my games. Then I play a guy called Nicholas Shkadid. I don't know how to play this in the last game. But it's a mirror match. Mirror match for Blastoids is very annoying. By the way, I'm playing Blastoids. Don't think I said that before. So that might help. Um, he's playing Blastoids, so it's an intense mirror match. You know, you can't really make mistakes in the mirror match. And you just have to know how to play it out. Um, I ended up beating him. I also had a problem where he was, um, I bridged my deck. I just started bridging my deck because I'm a collector, so I had to keep my cards mint. But I started bridging because I saw just bridging just seemed like a better way to shuffle. So I bridge my deck. I don't allow other people to bridge my deck. They can shuffle, you can shuffle my deck in any way you please. I do not care. Just don't bridge my deck. And I had to tell him twice not to bridge my deck. And I know on the second time I actually yelled at him for it. And after that, he didn't bridge my deck, he just cut it. So, hope, so it was a good thing that didn't have to go any further. Um, I didn't have to call a judge, because if I would have probably gone my hardest to get him disqualified if he would have kept bridging my cards, because I just don't like that. And I just have a judge shuffle if he kept trying to. Um, but I beat him, and that was good. And then I went on. Now I sit next to Tyler Smith. Tyler Smith. I heard the name before, but I, I know why. And then I also saw on his when I looked at the roster that he had a B2 next to his name. That means he won two buys from regionals. So that I can't just dismiss. Two buys from regionals, he's a good player. He won a regionals. He might even win two. I'm not too sure how buys work. So that sucked. Um I sit down, he has a heart gold, soul silver like playmat you would get with a theme deck. Laminated. So, I thought that was pretty funny. And he, he right off the bat, he was a cool guy. He's like, oh, my grandma laminated my mat. Blah, blah, blah. Throwing jokes around. It was real fun. And I bust out my mat. This is a double play mat, what, what you guys are looking at right now. Uh, if anyone wants... If I, uh... If I can do another video, I'll just show you guys it. But it, it uh, extends. And when I do an overlay of my deck, you'll see it. Um... And I, I put it down on the table, and he went, whoa! It's like, do you mind if we use your mat? Like, he's like, I wouldn't mind using your mat. And I'm like, yeah, sure, not a problem. Because I had it bent over like this. So it doesn't overlay. Just, And he's like, do you mind if we use it? And I'm like, sure. I'm like, well, won't your grandma be sad that you're not using her mat? And he took him a couple seconds. He's like, oh, right, yeah. And like laughed. So I extended the mat, you know. And we played. Um, I know he was playing two techs in his deck. Oh, he's playing Blastoids. I don't know if I said, like I said, guys, I'm just out of it. He was playing Blastoise Cario, so it was another mirror match. Didn't want to do that. Because it's a really, really hard matchup for me. So he had two techs. A Kecleon and a Mr. Mime. Didn't come into play. Didn't see play. Um, and it was pretty much I had to play perfectly or I lost. And I almost misplayed, but I didn't. And I ended up beating Kim. And then after that, we both got deck checked. Random deck check. And on the way, when we were sitting there, I, w I think there was another Blast Rights Keldeo player there, and I'm like, it's just a conspiracy. They think we're Canadian and we're, and we're um, stacking our decks and double deck bling. It was just a joke. No, I don't mean any offense to Canadian players. I know Canadian, all Canadian players don't joke, but whatever. It's a funny joke. I thought it was funny. Um, in the middle of my deck check, one of the, um, the people doing it comes up to me and shows me a sleeve, and it's actually pretty heavily marked. There's like a nice scratch on it. So, I thought at that point, I was disqualified, you know, game over, go home. Turned out that they were going to let me get another sleeve, <laughs> excuse me, and replace it. I went to my bag. At that point, I didn't remember that I switched from my world bag to my professor cup bag. And I didn't transfer the sleeves, because my girlfriend went to my hotel to grab me the bags, because I switched, because I didn't want to carry around the world's bag anymore, it was hurting my neck. So, I forgot to tell her to bring the sleeves. So she does, so the sleeves aren't in my bag. And I look at the judge with like, like my heart sank, I felt like I was gonna throw up. And I'm like, I don't have sleeves. 
can I go by? And she's like, sure. So I run throughout the whole entire play area, pushing just everybody out of my way, just, you know, yelling, excuse me, excuse me. And I'm running. I actually knocked over one of my friends. Uh, his name's Jeff. He's a real great guy. He helps me get around to um, tournaments. So, you know, I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for Jeff, because he's helped me get the... He, was, he drove me to the places where I acquired my play points, and just been helpful. He's told me a beach for my deck, so shout out to Jeff, man, couldn't have done it without you. Um, I actually knocked him over, and I'm like, I didn't knock him over, but I bumped into him, and I'm like, I'm so sorry, I can't, I can't talk right now, but I'll explain what happened later. So I go to Collector's Cash, and I thought they were sold out of the sleeves I was using, so I thought that was going to be a problem, but I finally got the sleeves, I run back to the deck check, she hands me the card, I show her the sleeve, she says that's fine, she said just try to be careful more next time, no warning, no penalty, nothing. So oh, that sucks. I get no break in between my match. I'm 5 0 at this point, so I don't have time to celebrate. I haven't had time to celebrate much of any of my victories at this point. So I'm sitting 5 0. You know, it's the best I've ever done at a tournament, and, I'm, and let alone I'm sitting at my very first national. So I'm on fire. You know, like I can't begin to explain how happy I am. And a little two seconds after getting my deck check, round six pairings go up. So round six, I'm sitting at the second table now. So, I mean, that's amazing. Never thought I'd even see that. Sitting at the second table, and I play a guy called Chris Nagel. Nagel? Nagel? I don't know. And he's playing a deck that he refers to as the Grey. And it was Mewtwo, Buffalon, Darkrai, Tornadus, Apple, Sableye with Evil Lights and Persia City. I couldn't get set up. He was hitting me for Gold Breaker on my Keldeos, like it was his job. I messed up. I messed up on my math because this was like six o'clock at night. At this point, round six. No, maybe even later. And I just was so out of it. You know, I said Sacred Sword. He was left with 20 HP left. Cause I, I honestly, I looked at the Persia City. Thought it was a Sky Arrow. So I'm like, okay, whatever. I know what that does. Forgot. Like I did. I just didn't notice it wasn't as Persia giving him 20 for his normals. And he just he takes the hit, and I'm like, okay. Whatever, he has a little bit left over, not a big deal, you know, any little, any of my Pokemon can take de deal with that. Gold Potions. Leaves him with 90 HP. 20 HP, or something. I don't know. I forgot, but... He Gold Potions, I flip the table, and then he proceeds to just win. And that was my first loss, so I'm 5-1, and one, and that sucked. Then I go to play another game against a guy called Chance Newman. He's playing Gothlock, and he was just an incredibly cool guy. Really, really nice. Like, he didn't even want to cut. Like, I had to, I kept going to give him the deck, and I forgot that he didn't want to cut. He was playing Gothlock, so that's that's a fun matchup. Um, I just couldn't get my stuff going. He, he got lucky. He was drawing really well. So... I lost that one, and I ended day five and two. And I'm gonna cut this video here and make the second part because uh, this one's running on time. So, guys, if you enjoyed the first part, please hop over and watch the second part. I'll put the annotation there.